the conviction bias, which is if somebody talks with so much conviction, so much anger, so much emotion, so much righteousness, we tend to think that there's something real about it. They wouldn't be faking these emotions, therefore there must be something true to what they say. And this is what makes people on television multi-millionaires. The angrier they appear, the more truthful they must be and the more audience people will reach because we have a propensity to want to have our emotions stirred, to want somebody who appeals to them, and we want to believe someone who kind of spews the anger that we're not necessarily comfortable with expressing, right? The reason for confirmation bias is you never want to believe that you are stupid. You never want to believe that you were conned, that somebody pulled the wool over your eyes, that you are not rational, that you did not come to your decision based on proper analysis. So you're wired, you have the bias already to believe what you already believe in, to believe in what you want to believe in. So you're going to look for the evidence that confirms what you've already believed. And trust me, it does motivate a huge percentage of, of people's behavior. It means it makes you why you don't want to change what you're already doing. Because to change what you're doing is to change your way of thinking and to admit that you were wrong, that you did something kind of stupid or that you, had, you were going in the wrong direction. Very, very hard for humans to do that. I mean, basically, I don't want to bore people with science, but the neuroscience of emotion is kind of interesting. Emotions evolve among animals hundreds, millions of years ago. Um, reptiles actually have a fear response. That they're the first sort of sign of the evolution of emotions. It's a very, very ancient system, and it's designed to make you aware of a danger or problem in your environment and take action. But animals feel an emotion. There's a chemical, an electrical, bioelectrical process that goes in the body, adrenaline, etc., and then it passes. They feel fear, and five minutes later it's gone. We humans inherited this emotional system. It's part of our brain. It's the lower part of our brain that governs it. But we also have thinking. And what ends up happening to us is we feel that emotion and we can't get rid of it. You live in this abstract world where nothing is real, where your mortality is just like something you don't even process. Get over that. Jump over that and make that leap. Make it something emotional. It's not gloomy. It's not morbid. It's liberating. Because when you think about your death and it becomes real, you realize, I don't have this much time. I better work harder. I better appreciate the the people in my life, I better love them more, I better appreciate every moment that I'm alive, and it just opens you up in so many ways. And it's a very famous koan in Buddhism. It's, it basically, it says, this one monk asks the Zen master, does a dog have Buddha nature? And the monk and, and the master replies, me. And me in Japanese means nothing or no. It really means nothing. It's like, oh, it's nothing. In other words, you can't answer the question. Yes and no have no meaning, right? Because in Buddhism, there is no discrimination. The discriminating mind is the ultimate form of samsara. So you need to like get rid of that and meditate on me. So for five years now, I've been meditating on me, only me. What does it mean? And it, you have no idea the richness that will flow from one little syllable like that and meditating it on every day. So my meditation is not exciting, it's not variety, it's the same thing every day, right?